infamous Dust Bowl day. You don't need much imagination to guess what happened to the breeding habitat of these birds during the 30s. We call it the Dirty 30s. Even before the worst of the drought, we knew we were in a dust depression. I visited my favorite fouling waters and found nothing but empty skies. All that was left of the great flights were my memories. I knew then that we had to do something, and do it soon. That's how it all started. Looking back, I couldn't have imagined where it would all lead. From the Dust Bowl 30s until today, Ducks Unlimited's dedication to providing homes for wildfowl and a myriad of other creatures has been unwavering. From its modest roots, Ducks Unlimited has become the world leader in wildlife conservation. Today we remain true to the vision of Joseph Palmer Knapp and other sportsmen who began Ducks Unlimited. True to our nature. Joe Knapp and friends Arthur Bartley and John Huntington formed a foundation called More Game Birds in America in 1930. In 1935 they set out to discover just how bad the duck crisis was by launching the first international wild duck census. A ragtag team of dedicated pilots and biologists flew across Canada's vast potholes and marshes surveying important waterfowl breeding grounds. Knapp and many others soon realized if there was hope of ever again seeing the skies darkened with waterfowl, they'd have to rescue the critical marshlands of Canada. In January of 1937, Knapp and his followers incorporated Ducks Unlimited. The move would change the face of conservation forever. The inaugural meeting of Ducks Unlimited Canada took place in Winnipeg in 1938. This would become the delivery arm of DU. Funds raised by volunteers and supporters were converted to habitat in Canada. The first order of business was finding a project. Contributors needed evidence of the problem and proof of a solution. They found one in a once fertile tract of Manitoba land, Big Grass Marsh. Drained, set on fire and left abandoned, Big grass had become a symbol of the destruction taking its toll on waterfowl. In only 10 days, the group constructed a temporary dam to halt the drainage and restore the marsh. DU had taken wing. Big grass was appropriately named Duck Factory No. 1. On the U.S. side, Ducks Unlimited used these early projects to marshal desperately needed funds to help rescue waning waterfowl populations. An army of volunteers, leaders who understood the magnitude of the problem, emerged in every single state of the Union. By 1940, Canadians were busy constructing more dams to create permanent impoundments where ducks could breed and nest. By 1943, in only five short years, DU had completed dozens of projects, revitalizing nature's capacity to support wildlife. After the war, interest grew and pockets opened. By 1947, DU had grown into a grassroots force that spanned the continent. The arrival of the 50s brought some of the best waterfowl seasons in years. Modern biologists and hunters alike called it the golden age of waterfowl. DU's annual fundraising efforts exceeded the half million dollar mark, helping achieve some of the highest duck populations in history. The toil and sweat of previous decades was beginning to pay off. After years of plenty, the early 60s brought drought, the worst since the Dust Bowl. True to our nature again, this adversity spawned one of DU's most ambitious plans, a goal of 50 wetland projects. That seemed monumental at the time. More wetland was being destroyed than was being restored. Even so, in 1966, DU celebrated its first million dollar fundraising year and the restoration of more than 1.5 million acres of wildlife habitat. This was also the year DU developed a unique system of special events, auctions, raffles, and scores of other fundraising concepts. A team of field staff working with volunteers across the U.S. staged banquets and events that would become DU's greatest source of revenue. As the 70s came to a close, Ducks Unlimited marked its 40th anniversary, delivering its 100 millionth dollar to Canada, where more than 1,700 habitat projects on 2.8 million acres had been completed. Another ugly drought blew in with the 80s, but the years of hard work brought results. This time, 98% of DU's total projects held water, 
providing soup kitchens for waterfowl desperate for rest and food before making their arduous migratory journeys. The issue of environmental awareness exploded in the 70s. Legislation protecting air, water, and wilderness was enacted. Ducks Unlimited's ongoing efforts to demonstrate the benefits of wetlands for both people and wildlife began to take widespread root in our heightened environmental consciousness. Our crowning legislative achievement, however, was our success in helping pass vital conservation provisions in the U.S. Farm Bills, provisions that included the widely heralded Conservation Reserve Program. The CRP has provided nearly 40 million acres of upland cover for a variety of wildfowl, while at the same time reducing soil erosion and improving water quality. CRP has done more for wildlife than any other program in the last half century. Thanks to sportsman-funded conservation initiatives, anyone who has ever looked with wonder at a dawn dotted by thousands of ducks, anyone who has marveled at the sights and sounds of a flock of Canada geese, has benefited from the efforts of hunters. No group cares more for wildlife, and no group has done more to help our wild creatures by providing the habitat they need to survive. As Aldo Leopold once wrote, there are those who can live without wild things, and some who cannot. When this organization was founded in the Dust Bowl days, there was just a handful of you committed to preserving and restoring our wetlands. And just about that time, a few hunters got together and formed a little group called Ducks Unlimited. And thank goodness they did. More than six decades after that first dinner at the Yale Club, Fundraising chapters at a grassroots level now hold over 5,000 events each year. From those initial funds of less than $600,000, contributions today total more than one billion, and nearly eight million acres of wildlife habitat have been conserved, an area larger than the states of Maryland and Delaware combined. That's a remarkable testament to what spirit can accomplish. I feel that this outfit deserves our support, and by support I mean dollars. So if you got any extra, don't forget, Ducks Unlimited.